project, man. And, you know, I've, I've, I've fallen in love with the Avengers series, the Marvel series, and I'm one of those converts. I'm, I wasn't really a fanboy at the beginning. Right. But after seeing these movies, uh, and this one just topped it off. I feel like I'm fanboy central now. I'm like, awesome. I'm into it. So That's cool. great job. First, right. what was your early knowledge of the whole Marvel comic book universe growing up or, or whatnot? I started collecting when I was 10 years old. Uh, and one of the first books I ever got my hands on was a uh, Captain America Falcon team up. So it's like a 30 year dream come true for us. And you know, when you, when you make a movie like this, uh, you know, the best way to make the movie is to just say to yourself, what do I want to see? You know, I've been a lifelong fan. I'm getting an opportunity to make this movie. What do I want to see on screen? How can we, you know, blow people away? How, how can I blow away the 12-year-old version of myself? Mm. What, what did I, you know, I, I saw Empire Strikes Back. I went to the movie theater at 11 a.m. and I didn't leave until 10 that night. I saw it like, you know, seven times in a row. Yeah. And you know, you want to give that experience to, uh, you know, to, to, to another kid. Yeah. How was it growing up? I mean, you guys are, are brother directors that have been uh, you know, family director teams before. Uh, do you guys bring different elements to the set that that y'all play off of, or, or, y'all, or is it just a collaboration of of? All it's, the... it's pretty much a collaboration. I mean, we don't do- divide up duties. There are some brother teams that do do that. Uh, pretty much the way that we work is, you know, uh, we talk a lot. You know, we have a lot of the same influences from gl- growing up. Watch a lot of the same movies. So when we get to set, we're pretty dialed in. We always say, like, if you ask one of us a question, you get an answer. That means you got an answer out of both of us. Mm-hmm. You know, working with the whole Marvel universe, how important is it for you to kind of take what happened in the last iteration episode right. uh, and, and and build off of that into to your movie? Because I know some of these movies are being shot simultaneously sure. and so forth. How how connected are you to? a previous movie or to Age of Ultron when you're Mm -hmm. going into these projects? It's a balance you want to strike because while at the same time part of the fun of the Marvel movies is that they are all connected narratively, you don't want to overburden any single movie with with what's happening outside of that movie. You want every movie to be, to live on its own feet and play play to an audience that doesn't know anything about the other films. So you you have to walk the line in terms of uh, uh, servicing both needs and it's, it sounds challenging, but actually it, was, it, was, it wasn't as hard as it seemed. And, um, because I think at the end of the day, Marvel gets more out of finding ways to surprise audiences by bringing them something fresh and surprising within each film rather than just simply being connected to what's been done before. So the, the, the emphasis is always on what's, what's new, what, what can be offered. And they're very, very good about we, let, letting each movie have its moment, um, saying, like, okay, what does the Cap- Captain America the Winter Soldier want to be? And like let 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 it be that, and then say okay, that's what it is, and then use that in the next movie. I work forty floors away, and it takes a hijacking for you to visit. Well, a nuclear war would do it too. Busy in there? Nothing. Some earmarks can't fix. I'm uh, here to ask a favor. I want you to call for a vote. Project Insight has to be delayed. Nick. Not a favor, that's a subcommittee hearing. A long one could be nothing, probably is nothing. I just need time to make sure it's nothing. Fine. But you gotta get Iron Man to stop by my niece's birthday party. Thank you, sir. And not just a flyby. He's gotta mingle. How how much of a surprise was it that the timing of this movie coincided with a lot of the national headlines mm-hmm. with Edward Snowden and right. everything else with NSA. Was that like, you know, kind of like a blessing in disguise as far as like making the movie even more socially relevant? I sure, think, you know? absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you want, when you make a political thriller, you want to grab on to political themes that are current or topical. And, you know, we're guys who read dig.com every day or BuzzFeed or, you know, we're getting our news all the time from sort of very current, you know, sources, New York Times. And, you know, you just want to rip stuff out of those headlines. And at the time, prior to Snowden, you were talking about civil liberty issues, spying, uh, drone strikes, drone technology, preemptive strikes. And so that's a lot of stuff we grabbed onto to put into the movie. And it just so happened that, you know, that, uh, that it became a scandal uh, with the NSA. But, uh, um, you know, you, you definitely want the movie to feel topical because this is a better movie-going experience. Okay. Well, great movie. Thank um, you, man. Love the technology, love the action sequences. I mean, it was, all the fans are going to be pleasantly surprised. Great, great job. Awesome, Thank man. you, man. Cool. Appreciate it.